and welcome to another video. I am Debbie. Today is my weekly whip and chat and I am going to be working on my Josephine Wall Fly Me to the Moon and this is from Diamond Painting Deutschland. I'm also going to be using my gorgeous tray and this is from DP Gal Creations, one of our sponsors. And on the other side, it does say J Wall 2023. She made this specifically for our event. And then I'm going to be using my gorgeous pen that I've been using um, for quite a while now. And this is my custom from Crafted Mate, who's also one of our sponsors. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to be working on this section here, and I have already started on this section, but I want to leave some of this for my whip and chat, and this is also a great area to be working on because you can see it I'm a little better, but it is going to be, as usual, quite a bit of confetti. I was working on this when I first started, and it was a lot of color blocking, but now I'm starting to get into the confetti, which is fine. I expected to have confetti for this kit. So um, I'll just have to be changing colors quite a bit. But how are you guys doing? Let me know in the comments. And it is May the 1st for me, which is really hard to believe that we're already into May. I mean, it seems like it was just January. And I was trying to decide you know, what my goals were. What did I really want to focus on for this year? And here we are already in May. Since it is a new month, let me know if you are going to be participating in any events that's starting in May. I really thought long and hard about the Mandy Manzano event. I have so many Mandy kits and I really wanted to work on one but I need to focus on this one. And then in June, when our event's over at the end of May, then I'm going to focus on a June event. But so for now, I am just going to focus on this one and I'll focus on another smaller one. Um, but also I just want to get as much as I can done of this as possible. But let me know if you guys are participating. I know some of you have already heard from you and you're participating in like two or three events at one time and using different kits. So I definitely commend you for that. I have a hard time trying to keep up with one kit for an event, much less three. But I think it's great for those of you that can do that. I need to follow your lead and see what all you do and then try to do that. But it never, ever works out. So anyway... Let me know what you're working on, whether it's for an event or not. And let me know how you guys are doing. What kind of week did you have? We had a pretty good week, actually. It's just been kind of busy and cold here. But I've gotten um, some diamond painting in. I probably will not get as much diamond painting in for the next couple of weeks just because we are wrapping everything up at work. And we're going to have our graduation soon. I need to participate in. And then also we're going to have an all-day meeting next week. And then I have to start getting my classes ready for my summer classes. But they don't start until June. So I think I'll be okay with not being too terribly busy and having some diamond painting time, which I really want to do. If you are not familiar with our event it is the Josephine Wall event, and you have until May the 1st to post a starting photo. And of course, May the 1st is today. You won't see this until tomorrow. So hopefully, if you wanted to be in the running for the grand prizes, you would need to have posted your start photo or sent one of us a starting photo by May the 1st. You can still participate if it's after May the 1st, but you will not be able to participate in the grand prize. And that's okay. If you miss that and you want to participate, then by all means, please do. We would love to have you. 
our group is going strong on Facebook. I go in there every morning and the afternoons and then the evenings to see what everyone has done. And I love seeing all the progress posts, especially on some of the kits that I want to do that either I have and I haven't done yet or that I am looking at purchasing. So that's been a lot of fun. And it's also been fun to see different kits from different companies, just to see the differences. So I'm really enjoying that as well. But um, if you would like, um, you know, please go ahead and go to our Facebook page and request to be entered in our Facebook page. And one of us will do that for you. And when I say us, that is myself, Angie, and then also it's Kim. So all of their information is below. And this week we are drew, doing a triple giveaway. We are each giving away the same thing, but we're each going to do it on our channel. So you will have three times to be able to win. And you can only win one time. So in other words, if you win on my channel for this week, then you cannot go to say Angie's channel or Kim's channel and be able to win the same prize because we think that, that wouldn't be fair. So we want to give everyone as much opportunity as possible. And this week's giveaway, and I will have some time in this whip and chat, I will give you a code word. And you will just enter that code word as a sentence into the description or the comments. And then you will be eligible when I do the draw for next week. So that is going to be a 10 pound gift certificate from Diamond Painting Fanatics. And their information is below. And then also we have a gift certificate, $25 to Saban's shop on Etsy. And that is, I think it's Coverminders by Saban or just Coverminder Saban. I love her Coverminders. Right now, her shop is currently closed because she has been going through some health issues. And I can say that because she's posted that on, on her Instagram, or I would not say that, but she's also posted that on other, on other postings that we have seen as well. And so we wanted to support Saban and what the three of us decided to do to support her because she was initially going to support us until she had to have go in for these health issues. So we are, we purchased three gift certificates from Saban shop. And once Saban opens, then you will be able to, you being the one that win, the ones that win, will be able to go to Saban shop and spend that gift certificate. And if you have not seen her cover minders, they are gorgeous. I have several cover minders from her and I love all of them. They're well-made. She is super nice. Her shop is just really easy to navigate. She has several different kinds of cover minders. And so there's always something when I go on there, no matter if I'm looking for something specific or not, there's always something on there that I see that I really like and that I want. So we will be doing that one and you'll be able to use both of those certificates and purchase something new. So hopefully um, you will be able to enjoy that, that you've been looking to purchase from one of them, and then you will have a certificate if you win. So make sure that you are watching all three of us so you can participate. All right, let's see. I have these stacked up my containers. Normally I have them spread out on my table, but because I'm recording and I don't want them spread out to where I have to reach, which I had to do last week and that didn't work so well. 
it really slowed me down to which that's fine too but I don't want to have to worry about my head getting in the way I don't think you want to see the top of my head so I did it this way so it may take me just a couple minutes to find each one but that's no big deal so if you're not familiar with my whip and tats I do Typically, I will have updates on my week, any family updates that I might have. And then from there, I will discuss what I am doing diamond painting wise and upcoming videos that you can expect. So this week, my daughter started having problems again with her sinuses. We've had problems with sinuses and allergies since she changed schools to go to a transition program for special needs and graduates and she's going to be finished in May so we are just hoping that we are able to finish and not have any more problems but she made it almost six weeks this time with not being sick and I just knew that the medication that her allergist, her ENT, changed for her, I just knew that that was going to be the answer. That we had found the correct medication and everything was going to be just lovely and we wouldn't have to worry about it until she got out of school. But no such luck. She came home, was feeling really bad, and I decided to take her to back to the allergist just to see if there's something that we needed to do or if you know she needed to have her medication changed or what you know what the case was and so he agreed that we needed to up her medication so now she's taking the second strongest nasal spray that he can give her without her having a CT scan of her nasal passages but they did um, a, a procedure to see if she had a sinus infection to see if her sinuses were impacted in any way and they weren't so he said he, he doesn't think that it's sinus related at all and instead of giving her antibiotics he just decided that it would be better to go ahead and just up the medication for nasal spray and then to continue taking the medicine that she's been taking with this so that's what we did she seems to be doing better she went back to school today she had missed a few days last week because of it and so she went back to school today and her last day is may the 19th so we are counting down just because of her being sick all the time not because she doesn't like the program she loves the program and she's going to miss it but she doesn't love being sick so she did miss their last dinner together where they went out to a hamburger restaurant and she was okay with that because she's not really crazy about um, burgers and where they were going she um, thinks it's okay she's really picky she said she doesn't really like their fries you know, well who cares if you don't, just don't get fries but nope she doesn't like their fries and so she was okay with not going so that made it that made it okay so I, I didn't feel so bad with her missing and if they were gonna go somewhere where she'd be really you know she really would have missed then she would have been upset the one thing that she did miss is they make doggy treats for different um, teachers for and for um, different you know, the parents and they sell all these doggy treats and so when they sell them to the school the school um, will purchase the doggy treats a lot of the you know the principal the a lot of the teachers and so they they have made quite a bit of money for their class making these doggy treats and it's all natural my dogs love them um, and before i even thought about purchasing them i had the recipe and so i showed my veterinarian and said you know is this good 
and they said, yes, this is absolutely, you know, wonderful. And her teacher is a absolute dog lover. He has three dogs, doesn't have any children. And so his pets are his kids. He absolutely adores his dogs. And so I felt really comfortable anyway, because I didn't think that he would consider anything that wasn't, he hadn't already checked out with his veterinarian, but I went ahead and I checked it. And our veterinarian even bought some because it's, you know, it's for good causes for, you know, dogs. It's for the kids to learn. They're learning, you know, how if you work hard, then you can earn things. And they earn the money from making these dog biscuits. And then they will use the money to buy more dog biscuits. They have a budget. They know exactly how much that's going to cost. And so then they can see after the dog biscuit, all the ingredients and everything, and they all go shopping together. They um, go in the bus. They buy all the dog treats or the, the ingredients for the dog treats. They even have really cute dog bones that um, they use like a cookie cutter, but it's for, it's a dog bone. And so they bought that off somewhere off of Etsy, Etsy. And then they go and after they sell them, then they see how much that they have left over. And they all work together to figure it out. And then they decide, you know, this is how much we have. And of course the teachers will look at it and say, yes, you're right. That's exactly how much you have left or no, you need to work on this some more. And then they're able to use that money, whatever they have left, and they can either go out to eat or have some kind of a party at school or whatever they want to do. And they all decide as a class what they want to do with their money. And so they're not, they don't just get the money and, and take it. They, they actually do it as a class and they have the, um, the time together and so it's a really good thing for them. And that's one thing that he started this year. And it has been an absolute hit. So I had to give her my money today for my dog biscuits. And it was kind of sad because she did miss the last time that they were making dog biscuits. But her teacher said, maybe we'll make one more batch and we will um, sell those to the parents only if we get parents that want to buy enough. And so I told her teacher, I said, um, I will buy, you know, some, and even if you make a small batch, you know, I'll, I'll take care of that. And so I think they're going to do one more in the next week. And then that way they can sell the little dog biscuits and she will be able to take part because that was one of her most favorite things in this class was to make the dog biscuits and she always talks about it she even knows exactly how much to put for the ingredients and so that has been just really good for her and she likes to bake anyway so for her to do this it's really cool so that's what happened this week and then next week she has one final thing to do with school and then i'm not sure what they're going to do after that have I know that we'll get, we'll probably get a calendar today and it'll show us, but she is really starting to feel, you know, what, that she's starting to worry a little bit, you know, what am I going to do after school? And she wants to take an online photography class. And I checked into a photography program and I thought this would be really good. And then I started reading more and more and because she has special needs, they did send me a syllabus to review and I started looking at it and I thought mm, nope this is not gonna work unfortunately it sounded really good but then you have to go out in the community and you have to get approval to work for a photographer to do different things such as take photos at a wedding or, you know, do this or that. And I thought that's just not, it's going to be too hard. You have to go to different places. You can't just use one. And so it was a little pricey for what she was going to get out of it anyway. Decided not to do that. So I do need to start thinking about what is this next season going to look like for both of us 
because now that she's out of school, I need to make sure she has something to do so she's not at home just sitting around getting bored all the time, whether it is going to be something that she just volunteers or if she's going to actually work. So I've got to start getting more into the groove and start making some phone calls. I've been kind of putting it off and I can't put it off anymore. I cannot procrastinate on this anymore. I've got to go ahead and get started doing that. So that is definitely on my to-do list and it keeps going up, it keeps moving up closer to the top. So I've got to get that done. So that's going to take me some time this week, but it's not anything that I think it's going to be really demanding. It's just something that I've got to take time to do. I don't know why I'm not a procrastinator, but I started thinking as I was listening to someone's whip and chat about how they have to just get the mental capacity to make some phone calls and they're always putting the calls off. I never have really thought about that with me. And then I started thinking as I was listening to this whip and chat is that, you know, I'm kind of like that too, that I just have to really make myself do something. Cause I always say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll make that call tomorrow. I'll make that appointment, you know, I'll call tomorrow, make the appointment, but no, I can't do that. I have to go ahead and think about what I really need to do. And that's definitely something that I need to take care of. So went roundabout on that one, but that's something that we are working on for her. And let's see. Not a whole lot really happened this past week. I did get quite a bit done at work. I have to because we're getting close to the end of the semester. My oldest daughter, I am so, so proud of her. She is in South Dakota and she has been wanting to go into medical forever. She's taken medical classes. She's taken anatomy and physiology one and two. She's taken chemistry, all the classes that she needs leading up to the actual core or the required classes for a medical major. And she was going to do that. And then her and her boyfriend moved to South Dakota. And so now she's checked into other schools there before they moved. And there's a couple of programs that she thinks she's going to like better there than the program that they had here. So I think she's going to be starting in the fall, but she's been working for a grocery store. She worked at a grocery store here for, I think it was about four years or so. And she worked in a specific department. And so when she moved, she had a job at a grocery store there before they even moved. She was offered the job online. Um, they had a, an interview online and, or actually a phone call. And so she was hired immediately and she's been working there since November, but she's really hurt. She really wants to go into medical and she doesn't have any experience except, you know, for her, her classes. And so when she applies for medical, you know, she gets a thanks, but no thanks, or she often will not get anything. And she saw something there and she thought, why not? So she went ahead and she applied. She didn't think that she would even hear back and she actually did. So she heard back from this one position and I had mentioned this last week and it was for an ICU, basically a nursing assistant. And she was really excited about it. She actually got a phone call the very next day after she had applied and she had an interview, a phone interview with an HR manager. And then she went on the interview and she said she thought the interview went really well. The, um, the person that was interviewing was super nice. The interview was, you know, long. It was, it was, she thought it was really good. And then she did not get the job. They called and told her 
you know, that she did really well, but that, you know, and they even said they would um, hire someone who didn't know and train them. But just so happens they had several that had experience. They ended up hiring three for the ICU that had quite a bit of experience. And they told her, you know, we would have hired you, but they had more experience. And so we had to go with that. And they said, you know, we um, suggest, you know, that you keep looking on our site and apply for something else. And so she was going to, and she just kind of um, waited. She's going to look over the weekend. And then the, on Monday of last week, she had gotten a call and she thought that it was, you know, kind of strange, but she had gotten a call, same hospital, and they wanted to know if she would be interested in same position, but in another area. And so she told them that, you know, she would, depending on, you know, what the job requirements were. And so they told her and they said that it was in the surgical area. And so it sounded even better than the job that she had actually interviewed for. So she was really excited about that and she didn't even apply for it. But apparently the manager that interviewed her for the ICU position was so impressed that when he heard that his colleague was going to be hiring for the surgical area, he suggested that she contact Maddie. And so Madison didn't even have to go to the interview to talk to the hiring manager. She went to the interview and it was actually an HR manager. And so she was, she thought, well, here we go again. I'm going to have to start all over and it's going to be another week or two before I hear anything. And so the HR manager actually showed her around the surgical area, got permission for her to go back there, showed her where she would be working if she had gotten the job and what she would be doing. She met some people and she said that it was really nice. It looks like something that she would want to do. And they talked about different things. And she said that she went into more detail than the first or the second interview. So she was, she felt you know pretty good about it. But then she said, you know, she didn't say anything else about me interviewing with the hiring manager or a supervisor or anything like that. And then the lady said, as Madison was leaving, she said, well, do you mind seeing yourself down the um, elevator. Do you think that you'd be able to get out okay? And so Madison told her, you know, yeah, it's not a problem. It takes me right down, you know, to where I parked. It's all good. And she said, I'd really appreciate it because I have to go check on some potential employees who are taking a clerical test. So Madison thought, well, that's the end of that because, you know, she didn't even want to talk to me going down the elevator. She's not interested. And so I must have blown it. And then the very next day, Madison got a phone call and she was offered the job. So she is beyond excited. Um, her and her now fiance, I've got to remember that. And that's kind of hard um, for me to even not to think about or to say because we are you know, accepting Kyle into our family, but it just sounds different. So you know, that's my baby. But anyway, she is going to be working in the surgical center. She is just beyond excited. So today she is going to have to give her notice to her manager at the food store. And she is really dreading it. They've been really good to her, um, especially this winter when they had a horrible winter. And they told her, don't worry about coming in if the weather is bad. And she had flex time. She was able to use her flex time so she didn't lose any money. And so she feels really bad about giving the notice because it is going to leave them in a bind. She is going to give them two weeks. And if it doesn't work out at the hospital, if she sees that she's not going to like it, then she's hoping that she will be able to go back. So she's, you know, trying to not burn the bridge and to keep it, you know, keep everything open and to give them as much time as possible 
to find somebody or to decide what they're going to do. And apparently she and her assistant manager are the only full-time employees in the produce department. And the assistant manager and his wife are both going out of the country for three months. And I think they're leaving in June. And so I guess they were going to leave Madison in charge. And so now she's not going to be there. And they're part-timers. Um, Madison said she heard them talking. And they're not real happy with the part-time help that they have. So she does feel really bad. And I told her, you know, I, I understand that, but you have to do what is best for you and just tell them, tell them, you know, that, it, you know, it's not the best timing. But then I also told her what timing is really good anyway. It's not really a good time to ever give your notice, especially, you know, if you're full time and they rely on you. And, and right now it's hard to find really good help. So she's going to be doing that today and then she's going to call and let me know how it goes. And she hates doing things like this. So I feel bad for, but I said, you know, it's something that you have to do. You did it when you were in Georgia, but you didn't feel bad because they had plenty of help. So, you know, I got that too. But thanks to all of you that have sent good vibes and good thoughts her way that she would get the position and so she, she did. And so now she's just trying to decide, you know, what am I going to do about school? And they're even going to let her take time off for school if she needs to. And if she needs to do rotations for school, which they had to do that here in Georgia. And if she needs to do that, then the hospital said they'll work with the school. They'll work with her. So it sounds really good. And they're planning on staying there for another year um, after their lease runs out in February, I think they've decided they're going to look for another apartment because they're not real happy with their apartment. And I think if they get another apartment in the same area, but you know, they're looking, they want to get on the other side of the town that they're in. They think that they would like that a little bit better because where they are is very small. They have to go into the big city in order to do any kind of shopping, you know, except she can shop at her, her store, but it's kind of expensive. But if they want to go out to eat or anything like that, then they have to go over to another city. And I think they would be happier in something a little bit larger. And then she's going to be happier working at a hospital instead of just having to deal with all that you have to with retail. So I think that she will be happier in South Dakota just for that. And then I think that her fiance is now, he's um, a little bit happier with his job because they've changed what he's, the type of, of work that he's doing. And I think that he is happier. He may still look for another job. I'm not sure about that yet but at least it is looking better for her that she's finally starting a career job. And I'm not saying that retail is not a career job. It definitely is. But for her, that is not the career job that she wanted. And she'd been going to school here for a while to take core classes for medical. So it just makes sense that she start doing something that she really wants to do. And she will be 25 in July. So it's time that she really starts to think about what she wants to do with her life and to start working towards those goals. So I'm really happy for her. And then she did get engaged last week. So I'm happy about that. Her ring is a little big, so they are getting it resized, but she loves the ring. They're making some plans, but it's still too early to start making very many plans because it's not going to be until next year. But we're, you know, talking about that, talking what that's going to look like. And she really likes his parents. So that's definitely a plus. So that's kind of what's going on in my world. 
my best friend came over on Saturday and it was really funny um, because we have a mutual friend and this friend um, I I had met her through scrapbooking and my friend Cindy met her through me when we went on a scrapbook retreat and so she knew who she was um, the other friend that is moving lives closer to Cindy than I do. So she had contacted Cindy and asked Cindy if she would like to have some cards, some green cards. She wanted to know if she still donated cards, and she said that she did. So Cindy um, had went and picked the cards up, and she said some cards are complete, and then other cards, we have to make the actual card. The card front part is done, where you have the front of the card that has, you know, the greeting, or it has all the decorations and everything on it. And then the card itself, you adhere the layers to the card. So anyway, Cindy had told me a couple weeks ago that she went, she picked these up, and she said, there's quite a few cards. And when she said quite a few, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, probably, you know, enough for a very small box. It won't be that much to go through. And so we had talked about meeting last week for lunch and then sitting there while we were eating and going through these cards. That way we wouldn't have to drive. It's about an hour drive or so from, you know, my house to hers. And we could just do that and we could meet for lunch. So she said, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Well, little did I know, her few cards and my few cards were not the same number of few, the same definition of few. So she called me or she texted me and she said, how about if I come over on Saturday, I'll bring the cards and we can go through these cards at your house. So I'm like, you know, okay, that sounds good. So she brought the cards over and she said, you know, I was thinking whenever um, we were talking about doing the cards that I didn't think we would have enough time or enough room. Well, when she brings these cards in, she had like two boxes, the priority, medium-sized priority boxes were full of these card fronts. And so I'm like, okay, that is not a few. Um, in my opinion, that was not a few, but and she just started laughing. She's like, yeah, I started thinking. I didn't think that would that was going to work very well for us because there's a lot of cards here. So it took us literally all day on Saturday. So what we decided to do is we spread everything out on my dining room table. And we did stop. We went and picked up some lunch for my family and then for us. And we did take time for lunch. But... It was just really funny because she had gotten over at my house about 1030. We started it was about 10 or so. We started as soon as she had gotten to my house. She had already, for the most part, separated the cards into different things. And we were donating for Cards for Soldiers. And it's a nonprofit that we donate to. And they're very specific on how they want the cards done. They have to go in a plastic cellophane. Um, to, to keep the card intact so nothing happens to it. They have to be, for the most part, the cards need to be flat. And there were a lot of card fronts, but they didn't have a lot of the cards. So I went into my craft room. I brought up my paper trimmer and everything that I needed, brought up a lot of paper and different things. And so we, um, they, a lot of them were in cellophane, but the cellophane was not very good. And so we took it out of that and put it in our little cellophane holders. But it took us all day because I would cut the paper to the size of the card to make the card. And then I would adhere the card front to the card. And then she would put the envelope in and then also put cellophane into the little cellophane. It's like a little package. So we put it in there and then she would go and she put it in the box where it should go based on the thing. 
and we finally finished about three o'clock on Saturday. And so then I looked at the box and I looked at her. I just started dying out laughing. And I said, how do we get into these kind of things? And we were real excited for the card. So Adrian, if you are listening, thanks so much for those cards. We ended up having over 300 cards between the cards that I had already completed, which was about 25 or 30. Cindy had completed a few cards and it was a close to three to 400 cards. I would say that 300 were donated and then we had you know, some. So we have three full boxes of the medium size priority to send to cards to soldiers and you could not get another card in any of those boxes. I mean, you can't get anything in there. So they are nicely packed. They're very tight. So that way they're not going to roll around. Hopefully the post office will not damage them because she's had some damaged boxes come to her for cards for soldiers, the lady that we sent it to lately. And so hopefully our box is packed very nicely. It is in a order that is going to help them. At least that's what we hope. That's what we're, we're banking on. And we are going to be able to send those cards out. So we would not have had three full boxes had it not been for Adrian. And the cards were really cute. And she had gotten them because Adrian did some, some swaps. And some of these had dates that were kind of far back, which I thought was really funny. But now they're all different, and so they're going to get different cards. And if I send cards out like that, I mass produce them. But it's going to be really nice because they're not mass produced, and we have a lot of cards. So we were very thankful that we got those cards from Adrian. That was so sweet of her to think of Cindy. And... What I thought was really funny is that I asked Cindy, I said, how do we get ourselves into these things? And she just started dying out laughing too, because last year, someone that she had met through her church asked her if she wanted a few things that a good friend of hers company was going out of business. They were closing. And they were getting rid of everything. They didn't want to sell things back to their vendors. They were just going to get rid of it. And they hated to just get rid of these things. It was for a stationery store. They didn't want to get rid of these things because they um, said you know, it was really nice and they would like to see it used. And so she thought of Cindy. Well, of course, Cindy thought of me. And we ended up having three carloads full of boxes. And I thought that was just really funny because we thought, oh, you know, a few things. And it was three full carloads. And so Cindy came over and we went through all of the things that she had given her and we were able to use quite a bit. So we um, put that in our stash and we will never ever use all the die cuts and everything that we have and all of the paper and different things that they gave us. And it is very nice. It's very high quality. So that's what I was laughing about. I'm like, how do we get ourselves into this? And um, she said, you know, I don't know. Here we go again. And um, but, you know, we were we were both just teasing because we really were thankful that we got all of this. Saves us a lot of money because when we donate, we donate our time and our supplies and even having to pay for the shipping because we have to pay for the boxes to go to cards for soldiers and i don't mind doing that at all but it's just really nice that we have supplies that were given to us and then especially with these cards because i would never get this many cards done this soon and that's how i just worked on cards all the time and especially cards that are different. There's not real, I don't think there's any two that are alike, except for the few that you know we made together. There, there's a few of those that are similar, but they're not 100% the same. So that's what we did on Saturday. And by the time that we stopped, I told her this, my back is absolutely killing me because 
our dining room table is not the best to be crafting on all day. And we end up going into our den and we have recliners. And I said, let's just sit here for a few minutes and let's just talk and just rest because I said, I don't know about you, but my back is killing me. So we did that for a while and she agreed. She said her back was, you know, really sore too. We walked around a little bit trying to get the kinks out because we were so busy just up and down all day and, you know, sitting and doing all those cards. But now we have our cards for soldiers that's taken care of through the summer because of all those boxes. And the next box that I will do, um, I'll probably send out in July or August and I will do some Christmas cards and they like to send those out around September. So they like to get them in around July or so because it goes to international, international bases and it can take some time to get there. And then by the time that they get it, it can take time for them to send out to their families. And that's what we do. We send cars. We, the cars are blank. And we just have greetings on the outside and the inside, too, if we want to. And then the soldiers will get these cards and they will send them to their family and friends. And they don't have to pay for cards because a lot of the, the places where they're on the bases, they don't have cards any kind of green cards. And so we'll send some pins and we send um, different things to go with their cards and even stamps sometimes. So that is, that was my weekend. So I am really excited that I'm going to send one box out. I'm going to kind of stagger it a little bit. I'm going to send a box out this week and I'm going to wait a couple of weeks and then I will send out another box. Cause I think that will be the best thing to do and not send them all at one time. They tend to send out um, sometimes two and 3,000 cards to, to bases, to military bases um, daily. And sometimes they send out more than that. So they do have volunteers on the other end that will send out cards, boxes of cards and snacks and different things to the bases. So I love doing that and she does too. So that way we also got to see each other and to spend some time, even though we were working really hard. So that was basically my weekend. We did go and see a movie. My daughter asked if we could go. She didn't want to go, didn't have any interest in going. And then her best friend was going to go, called and asked if we were going and Paige said no. And so she said, well, um, we're going to go. And so then all of a sudden she asked us, I'm like, okay, fine, we'll go. So we went to the movie on Sunday night and it was through, I've got this one turned sideways. It was through my school. They have usually at the end of the semester and sometimes during the semester in the summer, they'll have an um, these movies it's not it wasn't at the theater it was they roll out these huge screens we had it inside this time because it got really windy and it was rather chilly so they did it inside at the school and so um, we all took chairs and blankets and things and so we um, took some snacks and that was a lot of fun so we did that on sunday we hadn't done that in a long time and she enjoyed that. And it's just whatever movie that they're showing. So you don't really, you don't have a choice or anything. And so we saw Puss in Boots, which I thought was really cute. I wanted to see it anyway. And Paige said, there's no way I'm going to go and see that at the theater. If it comes out, when it comes out on DVD, we'll see it. Okay. And I'm like, okay, fine. So my husband's like, I have no desire to see this. But then whenever I told him, well, you know, it's at work and if you don't want to go, Paige and I'll go. And so he said, no, I'll go. So we all went. And speaking of my husband and my cat, as I said earlier, today is May the 1st. It is both of their birthdays. He will be X amount old and she is going to be, or she is now eight. 
and we had to kind of guess on her birthday. We weren't really sure. They said that her birthday was either the end of April or early part of May, whenever we had gotten her, that they just had to guess. And so I thought, what better way to celebrate than to celebrate both of them together? So that's what we're doing. And we got Salem. She loves cat treats, but she's very particular. So I got her favorite cat treats. And so she's already had those this morning and got her a new toy. So she's been playing with that. And I got her a new bed that really, really wasn't for her birthday, but she needed a new bed. And so got her a new bed and she has not really taken up with the bed yet, but she loves the box. We couldn't find her on, I guess it was Saturday, Sunday. And my husband's like, well, she's hiding somewhere. We knew she was in the house. We weren't worried. We were just curious where, you know, she was. And then he walked past the box that her bed came in. And he said, I see some beady eyes. And he looked, he, he thought at first that it was something that I had left in the box. And so he went to move it and she was in it. So she likes the box a lot better than she does the bed. And so I may just have to leave the box out for a little while because every time that I try to go and move it, then she flies in there and jumps in the box. So I guess she knows I'm going to end up putting it out in the garage to go to recycling. But right now, since it's her birthday, I just left the box. I left the box out. So we're going to have dinner at home tonight. I'd ask my husband, you know, do you want, what do you want for your birthday dinner? And so he said, I don't care. I don't want to go out. It's going to be Monday. I'm going to be tired. It's just another day, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, fine. I will cook you something that you really like. He really enjoys steak, especially on the grill. Well, we had that on Saturday and that he wanted that on Saturday. So I'm like, okay. So now it's still early morning on Monday. So I have to try to figure out what I'm going to cook for dinner. I have to go to the store anyway. So I'll pick something up, I guess. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do quite yet. That's basically it for family. I didn't think I'd have much to talk about. And here I am already at 50 minutes. As far as diamond painting on Thursday, I do have my April month in review. That's coming out on Thursday. It will have my completions and then it is going to have this one. So I'll show that on Thursday. And it's gonna show what I've also done today, even though today's the first, but that's fine. I'm not real concerned about that. I just didn't have time to start working on that particular video this weekend. So I did not get a chance to do that. So once I finish this video, I'm going to go directly into my Thursday video and get that one ready. So that way I'm not doing anything extra on here. What you see here that I've done, you'll see how much I've gotten completed plus this one little section here. And then um, I did get another paint gem. They have some new paint gems that came out. I ordered one of the new ones. It, it has come in and I need to get that one done. I might even kit that up and open it at the same time. I'm not sure yet. And then on Saturday, I will have another whip and chat with my massive cross stitch. I'm enjoying doing that one. I did one on Saturday and I read some comments. And so I will start on the comments of where I stopped on Saturday. So hopefully you will enjoy that one. And then I need to work on my storage system. I'm changing it and I can't decide how I'm going to record that, what exactly I want to do. 
but I need to get started on that because I do have some kits that I really need to kit down and I don't want to kit down until I really get that cleaned up. So I'm working on getting it cleaned up and then I will do a video on that. So that may not be this week, it may be next week. So before we go, I want to give you the secret word that you can use if you're interested in our giveaway for this week. And I will go on Monday of next week. You will have until Sunday to go ahead and to put that secret word out there. Because I, on Monday morning, I will go ahead and I will draw. I will draw for the, the giveaway. So that secret, let's do mystery. Because there are some of you that are doing the mystery paintings. And even though this obviously isn't a mystery, it's kind of a mystery to me because... I do have everything covered up, whether it's covered in release paper. The bottom half is covered um, in the double-sided adhesive paper. And I can't really see what I am working on until I get to that section, until I open up the section. So let's use the word mystery. And you want to use it in a sentence. Don't just say mystery or this is for the giveaway. You need to use mystery in a sentence. And mystery, M-Y-S-T-E-R-Y. So just include that in a sentence. And then I will use the random picker. And I will randomly choose who wins both of the, the gift certificates for this week. I am going to stop here because we are very close to an hour. And I've just been rambling on. I don't like really to go over an hour because I knew that that's not really fair to you guys. I don't know how long you'd want me to go over, but I've gotten quite a bit done. So you'll see how much I've gotten done on my Thursday video. And again, that's only going to be up through this hour today, which I really didn't get that much done because it's hard to talk and to look for all these colors on this mass canvas. But thanks so much for spending time with me today. I really do appreciate it. Hope that you've gotten something done if you wanted to. If you have not subscribed, please click on that subscribe button and also click on the notify bell so you will be notified when I have other videos uploaded. And also if you would click on that like button, I would really appreciate it. That really does help me. And until next time, happy diamond painting. Bye.